Sea turtles have inhabited the oceans for at least 120 million years, but they are now among the most endangered species on the planet. John Yang has the story about a global effort aimed at saving them. It's part of our breakthrough reporting for our series, The Leading Edge of Science. Most people head to the beach for the sun. In Costa Rica, we went as the sun was setting and stayed into the night. We'll walk together as a group. Um, we were with a group of wildlife so conservationists to hoping to find sea turtles, turtles coming ashore to lay eggs. Um, keep not in front of me, but sort of a little bit behind me, just so that if I see tracks ahead of me, I'll be able to stop us and just say, okay, there's something. Bright lights spooked the turtles, so we used a night vision camera. The search was hit or miss. Turtles' ancient instincts don't always sync with human schedules. We came upon this black turtle, a particularly skittish subspecies, just as she was heading back into the waters of the Pacific. These days, the odds are stacked against sea turtle survival. Among the biggest threats, humans. They encroach on their habitats and kill them for their meat and for their shells to make jewelry. This is tortoise shell as well? Illegal worldwide, but still freely available. And the threat exists even before they hatch. Across Central America, poachers destroy more than 90% of sea turtle nests on unguarded beaches. Turtle eggs are considered a local delicacy and an aphrodisiac. Eating them is so ingrained in the culture that poachers are almost never punished. Less exotic animals here. That's right. One possible tool in the fight against poaching has its roots thousands of miles from the turtles' nesting sites, a farm in Michigan. That's where conservation biologist Kim williams Gian developed a way to learn more about poachers. 3D printed plastic decoy eggs with GPS trackers. If a nest is poached, the decoy is scooped up too. One day I was just walking around and suddenly had an aha moment of what if we could track the, the poachers of the turtle eggs. williams Gian works for Paso Pacifico, a California-based group that protects biodiversity in Central America. Her inspiration came from some unlikely sources. I have seen a couple similar devices used actually on TV shows. So in the TV show Breaking Bad, there is one episode in which somebody puts a GPS tracker on a barrel of chemicals. There's another TV show called The Wire. And in one episode of that, there are two detectives who are putting a listening device into a tennis ball. The primary part... In fact, the information from williams Gian's decoy eggs could ultimately help law enforcement. If you're deploying eggs on several beaches, uh, in a country, and let's say they all end up going to the same neighborhood or the same block, then that suggests maybe a very centralized network with a couple of really key players. It takes williams Gian's 3D printer about 90 minutes to lay a decoy egg, and then it's elaborately painted to look like the real thing with the help of a Hollywood special effects makeup artist. The eggs go from the snowy fields of Michigan to the tropical forests of Costa Rica. Wildlife biologist Helen Feezy takes them from there. She joined Paso Pacifico's project in late 2016 as part of her PhD research. It's her job to plant the decoy eggs, which takes us back to our nighttime beach excursion. Three hours after our first sighting, we'd given up on seeing another one. But on the way back to our cars, we stumbled upon an olive ridley turtle digging her nest. For 20 minutes, her hand-like rear flippers scooped away sand, crafting a chamber for her eggs, and then... Oh, oh there you go. One. The turtle laid more than 50 eggs, and to demonstrate, Feezy added an imposter. She has no idea it's there, the poachers won't know it's there, and so we've got a, a nice little decoy hiding in there, tracking away. <laughs> waiting to see where, where they take them. So, And it's a very, very mixed feeling when you see the eggs move. On the one hand, you're like, yes, they're moving, they're working. Like, damn it, someone's stolen the nest. Like, and how does the information help fight poaching? So at the moment, we know that the eggs leave the beach. We know that they end up in the market. What we don't know is what's going on in the middle. It's absolutely crucial. If we Later, Feezy showed us the decoy's electronic trail using one she carried with her. And what specific information is it telling you? Okay, so the name of the egg that I've given it, 
um, the date and the time that it was at that location and then the mileage so we can start to get an idea of like not only where they're going but how fast they're moving what type of vehicles they're using but you have yeah. had cases where poachers or at least there's indications from the movements mm -hmm. that the poachers have found the decoy eggs? Everybody's going to find them at some point. Right. Somewhere along the trade line, they're going to find them. We did have occasion where we actually tracked the egg, and the final point where it like transmitted a signal was from in the middle of a riverbed. <laughs> Lisa Gonzalez, Paso Pacifico's Nicaragua director, was initially skeptical about the decoy idea. The first time you heard this suggestion, what was your reaction? Well, I think you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, th I think that's not going to happen. How you can do that? But, you know, Kimberly, she worked again with the artists and she did it. She did it. Absolutely. was was so good. Yes, and, and I was like, oh my gosh, you are a genius. Yes. This is a tricky one. To learn even more about the poachers, Feezy sends locals to buy eggs so she can sample their DNA. You've got like a salsa, kind of a chili salsa. And this is how people eat them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they knock them back with beer or alcohol or of some sort. Or... So you're trying to determine what species these eggs are? Yeah, what I want to know is what species laid the egg? and which population did that species come from. If we start getting a load of eggs from that same population, we know that there's a serious poaching problem going on on that beach. And that's where we can say, okay, we need to target law enforcement now, or we need to get a conservation project up and running that patrols the beach. Activists say the patrols are crucial. The night we visited this community, there was a meeting with police, prompted by the recent discovery of a dead turtle apparently killed for her eggs. Marlon Mora Vargas was there. He was a fisherman for more than 20 years and is now part of a regional network trying to save sea turtles. The people know that it's an endangered species, that it shouldn't be done. They just don't want to change. That's why we're working with kids, because they can change. They can learn. They can take new ideas, make a generational change. My kids know turtles. They've gone to see births of turtles. They want to be in the beaches with me. I show them the species that exist, what they shouldn't do. Does she cleanse the area? Lisa Gonzalez's daughter, Ashley Hodgson, is studying marine biology, a second generation sea turtle defender. They've been in the earth for thousands of years. They can survive through all these changes. And right now they are in the stage when they can't change anymore. Like they can't survive anymore and they need our help. And I am very happy that you are <laughs> doing this too. Your daughter seems to have captured this passion as well. Oh yes, thanks God. She is the one that uh, decided to help me in, in this uh, subject that I have to protect uh, uh, biodiversity. There's a big emphasis on outreach to young people. Local children watched as newly hatched sea turtles were released and made their way to the ocean. The turtles were born earlier that day and kept safe until after dark to protect them from birds and the scorching heat. Conservationists hope that among these kids, there's another Ashley Hodgson. My plan is to save sea turtles. <laughs> I know that's an ambitious plan, but I think if we work together, we can get the goal. And they believe these decoy eggs from Michigan will help them get there. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm John Yang on the Pacific coast of Costa Rica.